let's talk now about making it comfortable for a user to interact with the application. So one idea within this is not asking for users to enter data that they've already entered or that your system already has you know, registered about them. So users are really easily annoyed by tedious data entry sequences, especially when they have already provided information, and especially, especially in the mobile context when you, know, you don't have your keyboard, it's a little bit slower to enter in data. So your good, a good, good user experience and user interface on mobile definitely is performing sort of the maximum amount of work while requiring a minimum amount of information from users. And a good big part of this is smart defaults. So making smart assumptions on data entry forms about what the user might enter or what you already know about them, pre-filling pre form fields for them, saving some time. Additionally, a good UI is a, an accessible UI. And this really, designing around accessibility enhances the usability for all groups, not just those that might need it visually. And color is one of these elements of design that has a really strong impact on accessibility. So approximately 10% of men and 1% of women have some form of color blindness. So when designing interfaces, it's better to avoid using color as the only way that you're conveying information. So I wanted to touch on this idea of double encoding. You can see in this error message here on the top, it's doing a good job of double encoding. So I'm using both an icon and a text um, description as well as the color red. It's really triple encoded to visually show that there is an error and explain what the error is to the user. Uh, speaking of errors, I mean, you wanna be engineering for errors in general. So it's one thing on inline validation, but also, you know, just throughout the application, you wanna account for system errors, user errors, and design into your flows these um, solution paths. And messaging is very, very important within, within error messages. You can see in this top example on the slide, uh, we see these all the time, right? They're frustrating. You don't know what happened. You don't know what to fix. And on the bottom, it's, it's just a much more clear interaction with the application, and it gives the user the route to fix things and move forward. Additionally, you want to be protecting your user's work and data whenever possible. So that might mean something like confirmation dialogues whenever the user is performing destructive or irreversible actions. Or you could go another route, like maybe Dropbox in this screenshot here, which what they do is they save deleted files for 30 days automatically. And those files can be recovered within that grace period, bringing things back that you know, folks might really be relying on or need, or you know, plans change. So maybe they didn't need it one day, but they did them the next week. And uh, this allows them to retain that data, retain that information without losing it. Okay, back to the demo. Let's talk about these comfortable interaction patterns that I just, just went through. Okay, so let's look at some smart defaults. We already looked at our create new work order form a bit, but what you might have noticed and I hadn't highlighted yet is that uh, this already has my information I typed, but the two fields for requester and location, these are select lists. And instead of just putting in, you know, select dot, dot, dot as placeholder text and forcing the user to, you know, make a, make, make a decision and choice every time, you could do a few things here. Like in this case, what we're doing is taking the authenticated user for the application and pre-selecting them as the requester. There might be corner cases where the person requesting is not using the application. And in that case, you know, the user still has the control and freedom to select another person. Same thing for location. In this demo, the idea was to choose the closest, you know, geolocated uh, location that you have in your system to this user as they create the work order. And again, uh, hopefully that helps folks save time, you know, here and there and definitely doesn't add time to the flow. So it's kind of an easy win in a lot of cases if you're making these smart defaults and assumptions. Okay, and on, on the note of accessibility, which I talked about, we already looked at that example of a good inline validation. I just wanted to reiterate that we're, we're using the same patterns here where we're double encoding the error. Uh, so we have the icon as well as the message as well as the color red. And so this just really, really highlights and make it, makes it clear that this is in an error state. Something needs to change to move forward. And I didn't mention yet the idea of reserving the use of color. So I mentioned color is very, very powerful in mobile design and design in general, but with, with error messages or informative, basically with, with any content or data that's conveying a meaning within your system, so errors, warnings, success, you know, information, blurbs, things like that, there's sort of a few uh, categories, but you wanna reserve those colors for just that type of information. So I know when I see red in this mobile application, it's an error. I don't have to guess that it might be just, you know, some prettied up form. 
I know intuitively it's an error because red is used nowhere else in the app. And additionally on accessibility, there's this idea of uh, accessible color palettes. So the WCAG um, has this uh, many, many tools out there that you can use to test your color palettes and make sure that they're compliant with um, color contrast. So this one, the link is contrast grid. And basically this helps everybody out there, especially in the industrial environments that we're working in, you know, bright sunlight, dark rooms, rooms with many, many monitors and fluorescent lights. Like there's so many odd uh, use cases where folks are gonna be using these mobile applications. So you wanna definitely test your uh, color palettes and make sure that how you're using them is accessible, making sure the colors on foreground versus background are dark enough to be able to be read by, by users. All right, and then looking at the idea of engineering for errors. So I, I kind of showed it on accident earlier already, but we have this idea that, you know, this user, our sense and Bach, is authenticated uh, and can create work orders. However, if I sign in as somebody else, in this case, Bob the Builder. So Bob does not have the user privileges or admin privileges to be able to create work orders. So uh, we have engineered for that use case and designed a nice modal message to make it clear that that is what's going on in the system. That's why they're not unable to create a work order. Um, alternative routes that you might do, which I think would be a little bit less successful would be you know, just removing the button, right? You definitely want your application to be consistent for all users. So you can do things like disabled states. Uh, that might be one solution, but again, with a disabled state, the user gets no information about why that button is disabled. And it's a primary action within the application. So we opted to create uh, a modal dialog that lets them know, again, with our red error, error text that's only used for errors, uh, what's going on here. They don't have permission. And then down below within the message, you know, what they can do to solve or circumvent that issue. In this case, talk to their gateway admin. Okay, and finally within this, I want to talk about uh, protecting users' work. So we have that as a demo within the assets category. If I select an asset, and then maybe one of the actions is to delete that asset, first I'm hit with a uh, confirmation dialog again, which gives me a little bit of information about what my, delete it, uh, my deletion action, sort of what the repercussions of it are. In this case, you know, the, the asset will be deleted, but I get a nice blurb about, hey, this is gonna be saved within our deleted assets section of the homepage uh, for up to 30 days in case I need it back. So now at least I'm aware that that section is available if I need to go back and get things later. So in this case, I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that asset and then show you on our homepage where we have this recently deleted shortcut. And then I can come in here within 30 days, look at what I've deleted assets, work orders, whatever it is, multi-select, and then go ahead and restore them. And again, I'm given this nice inline confirmation banner that my action is registered. I can undo the action if I you know, select it all on accident or something like that. So that can be a really nice way to protect your user's work and data in case they need to access it later. 